How is everyone doing? Andrew Esquire here of The Legal Mindset, where we help you be your own judge. Now, I have been doing nonstop marathon coverage of the Rittenhouse case. Tonight is going to be another night where we're going to get into it. And it's also possible there could be a directed verdict. There could be something that's coming out, a motion that acquits Kyle, right? And Kyle could get off through the law and not through the jury. Now, typically, when you see a jury sat, when you see a jury that's been selected, they're there, they're sitting in the seats, typically, the jury is going to be the body that decides. But a lot of attorneys, a lot of people are talking about other possibilities, other ways that the judge and the judge alone can find that Kyle Rittenhouse is indeed innocent and acquit him of all his charges, or at least the homicide charges. Now, we're going to get into the Wisconsin law. We're going to get into the actual law so that going into tonight, when you're viewing the footage, when you're there with your favorite streamer, hopefully it's me with Nick Ricada. We're going to go on in a little bit. Hopefully you are able to follow along and know this law. So when the trial comes to certain spots, you know exactly what to look for and exactly what's going to go down under Wisconsin law. And look, Hashtag, I am not a Wisconsin lawyer, but I can read, and I am indeed a lawyer, so I looked up the actual statutes, the actual language that's going to tell us how this is going to get done. So without further ado, I'm not a guy to tease. I go there, and I give it to you and help you be your own judge and make your own decision. Let's hop over to the statute. Now, I've looked this up. These are the Wisconsin statutes, and this is 805 uh, 805.14 uh, motions challenging the sufficiency of evidence motions after a verdict. Now this gets into exactly the type of motions that challenge the sufficiency of evidence, right? So let's just read it through and we're going to get into exactly what's going on here. So number one, test of sufficiency of evidence, no motion challenging the sufficiency of evidence as a matter of law to support a verdict or an answer in a verdict shall be granted unless the court is satisfied that considering all credible evidence and reasonable inferences therefrom in the light most favorable to the party against whom the motion is made, there is no credible evidence to sustain a finding in favor of such party. What does that mean? Okay. What this means is we're about to talk about a lot of different motions. We're going to talk about a bunch of different motions, but for all of them, they have this test that the judge is going to apply, Judge Schroeder. So when you're paying attention to this, think about this legal standard. So the standard is that the judge has to take all evidence and view it in the light most favorable to the party which is not moving. So in this case, the defendant, let's say Kyle Rittenhouse, because we're watching the Kyle Rittenhouse case, but this is going to apply in all cases. This would apply in the Arbery case as well if they tried to do that. Although in that case, I don't think the evidence is even going to nearly be close enough for either side to make this motion. Now, in this case, right, in this case, and in a criminal case, by the way, in a criminal case, really only the defendant is going to make a directed verdict motion. That's not going to be something that's going to come up for the prosecution. But they're going to take all the evidence in the Rittenhouse case, and they're going to view it in the light most favorable to the prosecution. They're going to take everything and say, look, taking everything, taking every reasonable inference in favor of the prosecution, right, assuming that all of their stuff is right, can they prevail on the law? So they have to, the judge will have to assume everything in the favor of the prosecution. Now, we're here, we're on day six, right? We're going into day seven, and we have a lot of evidence, but almost all of it goes in favor of Kyle. Even the prosecution's own witnesses go in favor of Kyle. So in this case, even viewing it most favorable, it is not looking good for the prosecution. In fact, there isn't a single witness that the cross didn't completely destroy, that they didn't destroy their credibility, that didn't impeach themselves pretty much. You know, their reliability, credibility totally shot. There were a bunch of expert witnesses, sure, but they didn't really say much. A lot of times they were just there to verify video, to say, hey, this is video. We got it off the internet. That isn't much. That doesn't give much for the prosecution. Their star witness, witness Gage Grosskreutz, he ended up being a huge win for the defense. He admitted the elements of self-defense. He admitted that he pointed that gun at Kyle Rittenhouse. And that's exactly why, in this case, 
it's not looking good based on the test of sufficiency of the evidence, which is going to be applied to every single motion. So remember, this test is a test that's going to apply to every motion that we are about to talk about. Now, let's get into what the motions are. Here's the first one. And I hope that if you're watching today, you're able to watch this because we are going to see today the close of plaintiff's evidence. It is very likely that the plaintiff will close shortly after, during the day, or at least by the end of the day today. The plaintiff is all worn out. They don't have much left. They should be near the end of their case. So motion at the close of plaintiff's evidence. That's a prosecution. So when Binger is done, this is exactly what's going to happen. So at the close of plaintiff's evidence in trials to the jury, any defendant may move for dismissal on the ground of insufficiency of evidence. If the court determines that the defendant is entitled to dismissal, the court shall state with particularity on the record or in its order of dismissal, the grounds upon which the dismissal was granted and shall render judgment against the plaintiff. Why does it say multiple defendants? Well, there can be multiple criminal defendants. Think about the Arbery case. It could be possible that charges against one of them could be dismissed, but not all of them, right? So if the prosecution fails to present evidence against each and every one of the three, well, then one of them could dismiss their charges. That's for the Arbery case. Rittenhouse, there's one defendant. So there's really only one person who can move, even though all defendants, if there's multiple defendants, have that right to move for this motion. Now, this it happens at the end of plaintiff's evidence. But there's another motion, a motion at the close of all evidence. So at the close of the defense's evidence, they can make a motion and challenge the sufficiency of the evidence. And once again, move for a directed verdict, right? So that would be an acquittal, a not guilty or dismissal. Now a dismissal is not great because they could potentially get a second bite of the apple. You really want the directed verdict. That's the preference here. Or they can also move that the court find as a matter of law upon any claim or defense or any element or ground thereof. That's another really interesting thing here. They can actually do it for certain claims and charges, but not all. So for example, they could say, okay, for self-defense, can we just do the elements there? All right, do we check the box? Okay, great. Maybe we don't do the gun charges, right? Maybe the gun charges uh, aren't, or the, sorry, the gun charge singular and the curfew charge. Maybe those have to go to the jury. Okay. Who cares? Right. Or you could say, okay, um, you know, we're going to deal with one, but not the other. We're going to deal with, maybe they even get the gun charge out, or maybe they even challenge that one. So it's possible that you can challenge a lot of these charges when there's multiple charges, or you can just challenge one. So that's a very important part about these motions. Now let's say the jury goes out and the jury makes a decision. Now, if it's an acquittal, we really don't care. But look, we're not talking about the jury decision here. This is a video about the judge ruling as a matter of law. And we'll get into the probabilities of that in a second. But here, after a judgment, you can make several motions, several motions uh, to get off, to get acquitted. So let's see, motion for a judgment. A motion for a judgment on the verdict is not required. If no motion after verdict is filed within a time period specified, the judgment shall be entered on the verdict at the expiration thereof. If a motion after verdict is timely filed, a judgment on the verdict shall be entered upon denial of the motion. Okay? So if you make a motion for judgment notwithstanding the verdict, a party whom a verdict has been rendered may move the court for a judgment notwithstanding the verdict. We're going to call this you're going to hear lawyers drop the phrase J-N-O-V, right? J-N-O-V. That is a judgment notwithstanding the verdict. That's exactly what they're talking about. And the um, if the verdict is, is uh, for example, in the evidence, the verdict is proper, but for reasons evident in the record, which bear upon matters not included in the verdict, the movement shall have judgment. Look, if in this case, the jury comes back and the jury says guilty, I think Schroeder would highly consider a JNOV because think, okay, all the facts I said, what's going on here? What's happening, right? Um, you can also make, going down here, another motion, a motion for a directed verdict. And a mo party who's made a motion for directed verdict or dismissal on which the court has not ruled pending return of the verdict may renew it after the verdict. So let's say the judge, he takes in the motion, but he doesn't rule on it. He could rule on it after the verdict. So he could delay that directed verdict that might have been filed up here, right? That might have been filed right here. 
at the close of all evidence, let's say they file a motion there. Maybe the judge doesn't rule on it until after the verdict. That would be insane. Honestly, guys, that would be absolutely crazy. I don't think the judge wants to do that, but it's possible. The procedure allows for it. And that's what we're getting into here was the procedure and how this could happen procedurally in Wisconsin. Guys, it is a real possibility in this case. And it's crazy to say, because this is something that is more legal theory than actual practice. In practice, you don't get a lot of fun things happening. You don't get a lot of crazy things happening in the law. But in this case, we actually have a chance to see something that is super rare that almost never happens. And so that's why it's still really cool to stay tuned to this, to say, look, yes, Kyle looks like he's going to win here, but let's stay tuned and let's see how he wins. Let's say how this goes down. It would be so interesting to get a judgment as a matter of law. Now, what do I think the probability is? I said it on Mercada. I'm going to stick to it 33%. I think there's about a 33% chance at some point that there is a judgment on the law. Now, if they come back with a guilty verdict, I think there's a 100% chance almost. I mean, I'll say 99.9 .9 so I don't damage my professional credibility. But there is a massive chance that Schroeder comes back as of today, as of the evidence we have seen today, unless there's a massive blunder, unless there's some bombshell, right? I think the probability of a JNOV from Schroeder, given what we've seen today, would be massive if they came back with a guilty verdict. And the fact that the woke left and the narrative has completely turned and has completely turned around and said this is self-defense shows that they're not going to put up a fight. The woke left is not going to dig their heels in on this. Count for them to be fighting on the Arbery case, to be fighting elsewhere. Here is not the battle they're going to try to win because they've just taken a massive L in the Kyle Rittenhouse case. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This content if you like this sort of content quick small to the point leave a like on here comment and i will talk to you all soon and i'll see you all on ricada peace